back to the Bully Girl podcast. It's the one and only Dr. Taylor here, bringing some of the hottest topic discussions and kennels in the bully community straight to your ears. This is episode 12 of the BGM podcast, and I have a very special guest today by the name of Shy, owner of Frenchies on the Hill, straight out of Whitesburg, Tennessee. Welcome to the BGM podcast, Shy, and thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be on a Bully Girl Magazine podcast. I'm Shy with Frenchies on the Hill, and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you here. And then you have two of the sweetest babies with you today. Um, if you want to introduce them, I see Misha, which I am super <laughs> excited that Misha's here with you because Misha was just featured on the front of uh, issue 105 of the Bully Girl magazine. How exciting was that? Super, super exciting. Yes, Misha is a fourth generation Northwest Frenchies production. And when I first saw Misha years ago, I was blown away. And I never thought I would have the opportunity to own this beautiful French bulldog right here. And right. when his owner came to me with the question, do I want him? I was just blown away. And it was, it was, of course, like, yes, I was <laughs> crying and everything. So for him to be on issue 105 of Bully Girl magazine, it's something I could only ever dream of. Yeah, it's in the picture that is on there of him is stunning. I absolutely love it. I was super excited about that issue, um, especially yeah. knowing that he was going to be on there and that you're featured in the magazine is, is, is fantastic. Uh, who do you have with you in your lap? So this is his son, Litwick, his production here at Frenchies on the Hill. And he is his next legacy who I will be showing. And he is only 12 weeks old right now. Oh, my goodness. He is so adorable. And he's so well behaved. <laughs> yeah. just chilling. And just Misha's just right there just chilling, too. Most of <laughs> are all over the place. Yeah, he's, awesome. a, he's a good boy. I've already started him on table training for showing, and pretty soon we'll be starting with the lead. So he's he's on his way. That's awesome. I definitely want to ask you a few questions about like showing and stuff um, during this interview. But first, let's get into how you came up with the name Frenchies on the Hill. <laughs> okay, so when I when I first was thinking of a name, because I okay, so it, it started with my first French bulldog. I didn't plan on breeding the typical story. Oh, I'm not going to breed. Well, I just fell in love with French bulldogs. And after getting my first Frenchie, I was like, this dog changed my life. This dog saved me from just so much things that I was going through in my life at the time. So he was just there for me. And I was like, if somebody doesn't have a French bulldog, they just don't understand the love that they can bring into your life. So I was like, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to make a kennel name and I'm going to produce French Bulldogs. So I live on a hill, <laughs> a big hill. And um, I was like, ah, I'm from Cali. So, you know, you hear like Laguna Hills. It's like fancy, whatever. So I was like, okay, you know what? I, I think I like Frenchies on the hill. It's just, it's simple. It's, it's nice to me and i that's how i came up came up with it just frenchies on the hill yeah i like it I, it's super catchy i like it um i i mean it makes sense <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> yeah. how, long have you been, yeah. <laughs> how long have you um been into frenchies like have have you previously owned other bully breeds prior to owning a french bulldog no uh, well, I, well yes i did have a pit bull in high school but um my family dogs were chihuahua pekingese so I wasn't in the world of bullies that mm -hmm. much growing up. It was just canines, my my love for canines Yeah. Um, growing up my whole life. So um, it wasn't until 2020 when I brought my first French bulldog home. And that was it. I was hooked, upset. When they call when they say Frenchie obsession, it's a one thing. Frenchie leads <laughs> to six. <laughs> I mean, it, it's true. <laughs> It is definitely a thing. So have, have you been breeding since um, you had your first Frenchie or is like breeding something new to you? No. So breeding is actually new to me. I only had my first litter this year in April. And um, I was, I've been raising my dog since 2020 and yeah. building my program, building my everything that I'm doing. 
but my first litter did not happen till this year um, because I just wanted to make sure I was immersed in the world of raising French Bulldogs and learning everything I could. And I felt ready. I felt ready. Yeah. I love that. I love that you waited and, and just became acclimated and stuff with the breed. Um, and you just fell in love with it. I know a lot of people say the same exact thing. I myself love French Bulldogs. Um, and then just seeing everyone at like dog shows and stuff and how well they treat their bulldogs. And, and yeah, I have definitely heard it. It is an obsession to where you have one and you just can't get enough of them. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, so what are some of your goals as far as like productions and stuff go? So when I, when I started raising French bulldogs, I wasn't into showing yet. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got into showing that I really felt a direction with my program. And so it, it wasn't until I started showing that I wanted to head towards the quality of showing French Bulldogs, producing showing French Bulldogs. And so after I learned, um, you know, the confirmation and realized how important that is, because I do, I do feel like even though these are rare colors, I want to stick to as close as I can to an AKC standard, even though they're not standard colors. So that's right. really important to me. But that's one of that's a main goal is producing AKC standard confirmation with rare colors. Yeah, there are some um, I know some registries out there that do follow AKC standards, but still allow the exotic colors. Um, yeah, especially with French Bulldogs. So that's great. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was I was so lucky and fortunate to come across ICBR registry because I it, they gave me the opportunity to show my rare color dogs mm -hmm. with AKC standards. And yeah. to me, that was such a great opportunity to grow and for my program um, to grow as well, because unfortunately, you can't show rare colors in AKC and um I, I felt like that was going to be a limit on, on some of my growth. So I am so thankful for ICBR and allowing uh, all breeds, all colors. Yeah. And then following yeah. the AKC standard too is, yes. is super important for a lot of, yeah. um, especially Frenchy owners too. So I do, I do like that about that registry. That's pretty cool. Um, so I know that you are pretty big and, pretty busy on Instagram and stuff, but how else do you promote your litters? So I have a website and I, I do pay for some advertising, but mostly my growth is just IG. Like I, I grow on IG, I'm active on IG and that's pretty much how Frenchies on the Hill has grown a lot. That's where I've gotten a lot of my growth. Not only that, going out showing and just being in the community and taking my dogs everywhere I go, Home Depot, you'd be surprised how many times I make a connection with somebody just at Home Depot. So yeah. it, I just go, I just try to grow wherever I can. Yeah. They see those beautiful dogs and everyone just wants to stop and talk to you, ask all these questions and pet them. And then your dogs are, are pretty chill and, and calm. So of course, like, I love it. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, what has actually influenced you to step inside of the show ring? Well, it, it, okay. So the first time I ever, the first time I ever showed was my friend just randomly said, Hey, there's going to be this show an hour from us. You should definitely go. And I'm like, uh, me, I don't know anything about showing, <laughs> But I was like, oh, okay, so you know, I got in touch. I got in touch with the registry, and I asked a few questions, and I, you know, built up enough confidence to actually go to the show. And when I did, it was just, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal because even though I didn't know everything, everyone at the show was so supportive. The people showing, the other people showing their dogs, the other registrants, everyone was just so kind. And I just felt such a big sense of community and support that I didn't even knew existed because I, I haven't even sh you know shown before. So it was it was a really good feeling. Yeah, there's a lot into the, the show world that a lot of people miss out on just 
because they have never been before. And I, I try to influence as many people to go to any show just to kind of see what it's like, meet the community. And then once you, once you start showing, you'll start literally seeing the same exact people at these shows every single time you go. And then that's how you build the community um, and build a lot of friendships off of it as well. And there's people there that are super knowledgeable about the, any of the bully breeds um, that have been in it for so long. And they're just always willing to jump in and assist with like anything, answer any questions yeah. you may have. And then they just make you feel super comfortable. Um, yeah. I did see though, I did see that you uh, and your daughter are both in the Bully Girl magazine from the ICBR national show, both handling. How is that? <laughs> um, so the, what's what's really cute and funny is my my kid's a cat person. <laughs> He's a cat person, total cat person. But she decided that she was going to show Olox, and her and Olox have a very special bond. Mm -hmm. um, it, it feels really good to get out there and have your kid watch you, and you know you set an example for your child, and then it, and then it feels really good to see your child get out there and be confident and face things that they, that she's not, you know, she's never faced. So when she first started, she never, you know, she started from nothing. She didn't know. And to see her get out there and be confident and show her dog and learn and make friends at the shows, mm -hmm. which is a really good feeling. Yeah. It was awesome seeing the both of you out there just handling the dog, like professionals, especially her. And I was just like, she's so young and she's just doing so <laughs> well. Like you would think that she was raised around it, like just raised showing her, her entire life the way that she was, like you said, confident out there. Yeah, she she definitely teaches she teaches mama how to be confident. Yeah, she's a <laughs> she's a bright little girl, so she uh, she gives me a few tips. <laughs> she killed it out there. Like kudos to her. Like just keep like putting her out there, and she likes it. Hey, let her do it. Yeah, we're 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 definitely itching to get to our next show. I'll be popping out with this little boy right here. And then I have a female who I cannot wait to show who I've been training. She is a, a co-own of a partner with me. And so I, I'm super excited. She is a Coco Sable Pie female. Oh. So I can't wait to debut her and show her. But yeah, anybody, anybody who's scared to go to a show or start showing, my first thing is like, just go. If you just go... You don't even have to show, but just observe and look around and be part of it. You know, then it then it prepares you for the next time you go when you actually want to show. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. then a lot of people get out there and they're just super nervous about being in front of all these people uh, showing their dogs. But in this case, you know, that they can hire handlers or they can just try to do it themselves. And a lot of times that's how every single handler has started out, just showing their own dogs. Um, but the more and more people go to these shows, the more confident and relaxed that they become. And so then you just yeah. notice that these people that once had handlers are jumping in the show ring themselves and killing yeah. it out there. So, yeah, yeah. I, you, the first show is always nerve wracking. If you're not an outgoing person or you don't like being in the center of the ring, I'll definitely say that. But with the support of everyone there it the next time it becomes easier and you just feel more like you're at home just being with your friends yeah it's definitely a good feeling yeah yeah I get that vibe as well I love going to shows I don't personally show my dogs anymore but just being out there with the bully girl magazine um taking pictures and stuff it I see so many people that I have gotten to know over the last few years and I just I absolutely love it I love going to shows I love meeting everyone that's there and stuff like that so for sure, I, I I recommend everyone to to go and just experience. Yeah, and you're and you're definitely somebody when 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 we see you out there in the ring, it's like oh she's out there in the ring. You're just your energy's so good, and I'm like oh okay, I feel safe. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. So oh, whenever I see you. you out in the ring, I love it. Yeah. Oh, thank you, man. It didn't start out. It didn't start out with me being okay about it. Like I just you know it's something that like the same exact thing with showing just be in the center of attention and majority of the time I'm usually <laughs> the only photographer in the ring yeah. taking pictures. So I'm like a lot of people's probably like bouncing around, looking at me, running around the ring, trying to get good angles of their dogs. And I'm just like, uh, well, I got used to it though. So now, you know, I just see <laughs> the same exact people at the same exact shows. They, a lot of times they run up to me and give me hugs and stuff. So it's all about like unity and 
building like friendships and stuff. I think that a lot of these people that come to these shows, we are like a huge family and I just, I love it. Yeah. 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 Um, And and that's, that's another thing. um, Like when you said you got used to it, like being desensitized because um, I didn't get Misha until he was three years old. He had no prior showing experience. And six days after I've had him, I showed him for the first time. We took off to Las Vegas, flew across the country, and he did his first show. Mm -hmm. And I was nervous because I I was like, oh, my gosh, he's never been around these dogs. How is he going to react? But just working with him before the show, it really helped. And then each show, I've noticed he's just become more desensitized. And he knows. He's like, give me that hot dog. Like, he's... (laughs) So how, how is he, does he have any titles or let's, how does he do while he's in the show ring? Does he win or are we still kind of working on his confidence in the show ring? So I, I feel like he's a very confident dog. He's a mm-hmm. confident dog and uh, <laughs> um, he is an ICBR champion. So oh, wow. I did champion him with ICBR and uh we did he he did i think he does pretty good i feel like as long as we keep him hydrated and energized he does really good but you know just like just like babies or other people we get tired and you know sometimes Mm -hmm. he's just not feeling it but for the most part he's ready to compete and he's ready to take those titles yeah he's a good good boy good (laughs) It's beautiful. So congratulations on that. Um, That is huge. And I'm excited for, you know, I'm excited to see all of your dogs in the show ring. And I'm super excited to see him become a grand champion too. So just keep putting him out there. He'll, he'll get that title in no time. Thank you. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to the next show. Yeah. So other than taking the dogs to like Home Depot, um, how do you manage to socialize your dogs? So, socializing my dogs like you mean from a puppy or just my whole pack yeah just um both so we can talk about both of them so like from you know a puppy to like socializing them with other humans and then also bringing them together as a pack got it got it so for my first litter socializing was super easy because we have other pets in the house. So as far as being used to other animals, I have chickens on my farm. So I would put the babies out in a pen on a piece of fake grass, of course. And, um, you know, they would just watch my chickens come up to the pen and walk away. So they're, they're used to that. They're used to cats. And then, of course, being handled. I'm super hands-on with my dogs. So from a very young age... And I, and I know, I know some people are like, you shouldn't be touching your dogs at that age. But from the minute they were born, I was holding and kissing them. That's just the <laughs> way it is. Yeah. So I'm super hands-on with my dogs and, um, I'm fortunate to have some amazing neighbors who came over and played with the babies and helped socialize them. And then of course, taking them in car rides and whatever I can do, um, and then exposing them to different sounds from an early age, um, you know, all their senses and whatnot, just exposing them to the vacuum and bubble wrap and different, yeah. you know, light, dark noises and whatnot. So it was, it was really fun socializing them. And then regarding my, my older dogs, um, from bringing them home at eight weeks old, the same thing, just taking them with me everywhere, letting people pet them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, not, not just anyone, cause there is risk. You can, you can get, you know, parvo and stuff like that, but, um, being super careful in that sense and just, uh, taking them wherever I go, basically. I love it. Super spoiled as you can tell. (laughs) 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 I love it though. That's awesome. Um, so, what stigmas do you hear about the French bulldog breed? Oh, there is a lot of stigma when it comes to French bulldogs. Um, I think the number one thing is they have breathing issues. Mm-hmm. That's the number one thing I hear. And although it can be true for any dog, it not just French bulldogs, um, not all Frenchies have breathing issues. And that's one of the main things that I focus on in my program is functional breathing well Frenchies. So, you know, all my dogs get evaluated and um, we, I decide who to pair them with because, and I'll decide for like who I want for the next 
litter to be paired because it's, it's important to me that I'm not perpetuating issues, especially breathing issues. Right. I love that about your program. Um, I also know that you are one of the only breeders that will literally hand deliver these puppies to their new owners <laughs> as well. A lot of people just will hire like ground shippers and things like that, but you personally take out the time for yourself and will deliver puppies. I yes. think this is amazing. Yeah, I, I, I have to say it feels so good and I, I might be slightly addicted to the feeling of <laughs> a family reacting to getting their puppy. Mm -hmm. It's the best feeling in the world. Besides producing amazing, healthy puppies, I think the next best feeling is when the family sees the puppy and they just get teary eyed or they're just joyous. It, right. It's just such a good feeling to me. And I know that that puppy, you know, got there and I got to experience that special moment with them. So if I can definitely hand deliver myself, it'll always be my first choice. Yeah, that is great. I, yeah. The feeling of that, I can't, I can't even imagine, like, especially the cute little chunky little French bulldog little puppies. <laughs> and then, yeah. People are like, how could you say, people are like, how could you say bye to them? <laughs> and it's like, well, because you pick the best families who are going to love your dogs and it just makes it that much easier to say bye because it's not like they're just going anywhere. Like I really vet my families and my families vet me. <laughs> like yeah. um, one, one of my families talked to two different vets asking questions, which is amazing because to me yeah. that shows they really care. Uh, but when I'm doing a send off and I, you know, I might cry in the corner secretly for a family, but when I'm saying bye, you know, it's a lot easier because I have some yeah. good families, really good families. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love the vetting process too. Um, how do you usually just like scope out the family that's interested in your productions? Yeah. So if somebody's interested in a puppy or getting on my waiting list, I always send an application. Okay. And my application is pretty in depth. And if you're willing to answer those questions, it, it shows me a lot. It tells me a lot about you right off the bat. And to me, if you could fill out the application, it's a really big step forward. And then I feel comfortable proceeding with like talking to you and stuff like that. So it, I feel like the application is a big indicator if somebody's really serious or not, mm -hmm. or how much they're willing to share about themselves. Yeah, I do. I do love that. It also helps build that trust too. So, you know, like, yeah, my dog is going to be taken care of because, you know, who takes the time out to fill out this long application and stuff yeah. like that, and like, <laughs> said, like willing to share this information. So I think yeah. that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So you have just, you have so much stuff going on that is just so amazing that you do with Frenchies on the Hill. Um, what else sets you apart from other breeders that you may have met at like shows or that you see through uh, like social media platforms? I think being transparent. Well, I'm, I wouldn't say it sets me apart from other breeders. I just feel like I feel like every every breeder I've met is amazing. I, mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm super transparent and things that may be hard for somebody else to share. I just say it. I'm like, you know, like, hey, I didn't get the best test results, but, um, you know, and that might scare some people because it's, you know, we strive to all have the amazing results and this and that. But, you know, my, my whole thing is we all come from different places and we all start with different dogs. And as long as we're pushing forward and doing better with each pairing. So I have no problem being like, hey, you know, I didn't get perfect tips or something because I know I'm going to build towards that and um, for that, you know, as I, as I go on with each litter. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, but tra transparency to me is crucial. Mm -hmm. Just being communicative and transparent is probably one of the things that I feel has helped me grow the most because a lot yeah. of people come to me and are like, wow, like, you know, the fact that you said this or you shared that really helped me, or I had no idea about this thing you know, and the fact that you shared that about your program, you know, it really helped me with mine and, and stuff like that. So that, you know, that makes me feel good being transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like that. Um, it is rare though, to see a lot of breeders 
become so transparent. And a lot of times it's, it's because that they're afraid of like backlash from the community, the community that we're in. Um, there's, there are a lot of judgmental people, but then there's also a lot of really amazing people that have been through the same exact struggles that have, you know, may have had a litter with some flaws in it. that are not afraid to talk about it with the community and be like, Hey, look, this dog is not show quality or breeding quality. So we're just going to pet home it. Um, there are amazing breeders out there that will own up to that and, and put it out there for people. And I just appreciate it so much because how else can we learn? You know, if we don't yeah. know, and you know, we might uh, be new to the, the community and stuff and someone sell us a dog that isn't quite the standard for whatever purpose it is, or may have some sort of genetic defect. We need to know about it or else we might produce a whole litter with yeah. whatever is going on, you know? Absolutely. And, yeah, and that's, that's Yeah. I love that about your program and, and you as an individual, I don't know, you just bring me so much joy just talking to you and just learning about your kennel and the way that you do things. It's just, oh. I, I love it. I love it so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. you. Um, I, I feel um, like, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I, I feel like another thing that helps me is um, just doing OFA evaluations mm -hmm. To me, um, you know, of course I want perfect, but nothing's perfect. Nothing is truly perfect. So I feel like doing OFA evaluations in my program has helped me make better decisions with who I'm going to pair who with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's another thing that I think has helped me in my program. Yeah. There's not a lot of people who really know about OFA and the different types of tests that they actually have. Um, I do it all the time when it comes to like the hips and elbows for our dogs here and stuff um, and have done it from, you know, since they were about six months old. And then once again, we'll do the same test once they, they hit two just to see like the changes and everything, especially when it comes to um, like hip dysplasia and stuff. So I do like that a lot um, about your kennel as well and, and testing. So kudos Thank to you. you on that. Kudos to you. Um and so is there anything about the Bully Girl magazine um, or the BGM podcast that you want to see more of in the future? I, What you guys are doing is amazing. I feel like giving an opportunity for somebody to sit down and answer questions and you're letting the community have somebody have a spotlight on them and letting the community learn about them is really nice. And um, I, I, one thing I would like to see in the Bully Girl magazine, which I'm not 100% sure if you guys have done it or not, but I would love to see like an art section, a canine art section. That would be amazing. Okay. All right. For sure. We'll, um, we'll definitely whether, like. Whether, whether it's like contestants doing art yeah. or youth doing art, just a little section of like, something to do with canines and art like bullies and art. and art that would be amazing that would be that would I, be i amazing. love art <laughs> yeah I love it. that would be cool i do see a lot of art though i see a lot of like tattoos and stuff with bullies yeah. and, and everything just uh, that's actually a really good idea thank you so much for that so we'll we'll throw that on our table and and, and talk about that for future issues in the magazine for sure yeah but what you guys are doing is amazing <laughs> it's uh it's bringing community together and I, I'm truly honored to to be here in this moment you know, on this podcast and having my beautiful stud featured on issue 105. It, it is a blessing and I'm very grateful. Well, I am super grateful to actually have you here with me today um, and giving you the chance to share your story and how you do things as a breeder and how you ended up here. I just think it's great. Um you know, you're doing everything. It seems amazing. I just want you to keep pushing, get Misha back out there in the show ring so he can get his grand champion title, um, get his baby right there asleep in your arms out there. <laughs> I cannot wait to see y'all back in the show ring. Um, but before we wrap up this episode, is there anything that you want to say to our audience? Yeah, if you are a new breeder, I would love to just say, stick to your vision. You're first may not be somebody else's first. Your first litter may be somebody else's 10th litter. And not to get discouraged, trust in yourself, believe in yourself, feel that vision, 
and keep working towards it because your your vision will come into reality as long as you put your whole heart and soul in it and don't ever give up on that. Absolutely. Well, y'all heard her. Um, I want to thank you again, Shai, for joining the BGM podcast and sharing all of your knowledge with us this evening. As a reminder, I want everyone in the audience to be sure to check out the Bully Girl app and bgmwarehouse.com for the latest merchandise, interviews, show pictures, and more. I want to see everyone back at the next episode of the Bully Girl podcast. Peace. Thank you.